Welcome back, World History Classes. I apologize that my video cut off at 15 minutes. I didn't realize I had gone so long already. Uh, we finished up with the three estates of French society, and we will continue to move on um, to the next portion of this particular slideshow. So, essentially what happens is you have these three estates in French society, and as you all know, um, France is broke at this point in time. So there is this legislative body known as the Estates General. And the purpose of the Estates General, it was a representative body of those three estates of France. And the reason why King Louis decided to call the Estates General back together, they had not met since 1614, uh, because France was broke and he needed alternative ways of collecting taxes. And he was actually interested in possibly collecting taxes on the second estate, the nobles. So that was one of his reasons that he wanted to call forth the Estates General. But that was a way of putting that decision off on them without the nobles being upset at him. But he also wanted to follow the orders and procedures that were set forth in the Estates General. Um, so they actually were brought together and they had sat for several weeks in May and June of 1789, but the three estates had bickered over their powers in the actual assembly. Um, originally, each estate had had equal number of delegates, but there was a special provision that was granted by the king in which the third estate actually received double representation. Now this is this, in its own right, was considered a revolution by the Third Estate because never before had they been granted any more representation than the First or Second Estates. Always kind of the way it had went historically is that the First, first Estate got a vote, the Second Estate got a vote, and the Third Estate got a vote, and the First and Second Estates would team up against the Third Estate, hence the reason the Third Estate was always, again, just considered commoners and they always had to pay the taxes and everything else. Um, so what happened, though, is that King Louis allowed the Third Estate to actually receive double representation this time, and that's a huge deal. However, the Third Estate thought that all three estates would meet together as one large group and that each delegate would equal a vote. Okay, so kind of similar to the way Congress um, passes bills into law now they vote individually. That's what the third estate was thinking was going to happen. However, um, on May 6, the king addressed the estates general and he also included the idea that they would vote by orders. In other words, a collective vote of each estate would be weighed equally. So in other words, the double representation that King Louis had given the third estate, it was only symbolic. And as you can imagine, they were very upset about that. So they wanted the estates to meet together in one large setting, and they wanted them to vote by heads. In other words, individual voting rather than by orders. Now, the first and second estate, they also had grievances against the king as well. As you can imagine, the king had pretty much bankrupt France, and they were trying to limit his power also. However, they knew the first and second estates especially the second estate, knew that they had more to lose than they had to gain. The third, third estate had everything to gain in this situation. So the second estate knew that they had to work their way through this, kind of tiptoeing through the tulips. They didn't want to upset the balance too much, even though they did want to try to gain some, some things back from the king. They were willing to keep the status quo if it kept them from losing too much. Um, the majority of the noble and clergy held firm to the idea of keeping the estates separated during voting. Now what happened on June 17th of 1789 was a turning point because the third estate was joined by a handful of nobles and clergymen who felt sorry for them in their situation. And what they ended up doing is they voted as a group for what is considered a much more radical measure. They declared themselves the National Assembly of France and quote unquote an assembly meant to represent all French people not the divided estates. This was a major turning point for the third estate. They also sent word to the other estates that they were free to join them. However, 
they made it clear that no matter what, whether they joined or not, the National Assembly was going to make the laws and they were going to run the government for the new French nation. Wow, that blew up really quickly. And as you can imagine, King Louis was not excited about that at all. Um, he, in fact, what he did is he is going to essentially kick um, the, the, this new National Assembly out of their meeting location and they're going to move next door to the King's Tennis Court. And they're going to take this oath. They are going to agree together that they will basically stay convened until they bring forth a national constitution. A constitution that will limit the power of the king, that will give more representation to the National Assembly. And eventually the National Assembly's name will be changed to the National Constituent Assembly. And again, it's an assembly not of the estates but of the people. And this was a major turning point for the French people um, because before they considered themselves a grouping of three different estates living under the rule of a king, now going forward they considered themselves a French nation for the first time. And you can see in this particular painting this is um, it was an indoor tennis coat, indoor tennis court and this was the tennis court oath as you can see members voting upon. Now here's where the true symbolism is if you look in this particular photo here notice in the front here you see a member of the first estate a clergyman second estate the nobleman and then the middle the guy that's bringing them all together the third estate the commoner the merchant man bringing them all together this will end our presentation for the day when we pick up, we're going to talk more about the actual beginning of the revolution, the first shots that will be fired in the French Revolution. And of course, it's going to start in that hotbed in France, the lovely city of Paris. Thanks again.